Uh, hey, uh, I'm Dinesh. I work at Gojek and uh, for some production services we use Golang and also some other services. So today mainly I'm gonna uh, talk about like the way uh, we can do testing with Golang. It's not an extensive thing but rather uh, a short intro and uh, giving us sort of like these are the things which exist. It's pretty basic and then I uh, want you guys to go and look up further and then uh, use it. So just raise of hands like how many of us write like test driven development not just in Golang perspective but everywhere other languages. Oh. Okay. No I thought I will not talk about TDD but seems like there is much we can discuss about it. Okay just random thing like why, no, why, why don't we write test like any reasons just you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> but if if you have to change something later again, will will that be more time consuming when you have tests or without tests? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't care. <laughs> but any other reasons? Yes, sure. I'll, we'll talk about time. Surely that's not true. Then actually, we are not uh, thinking in uh, and uh, our system is so complex that we don't know the basic case cutting the system. So like if you want to go TDD way, you should understand it how to break and what are your basic uh, done criteria. Case cases, right? Okay, you leave TDD design. then like you will will you do you guys have hundred or not hundred percent of coverage? Ninety five percentage of coverage. Like forget about unit tests. Like, at least test for your whole production code. I mean not just TDD like others others. No? So the the way I'm asking here is uh Let's say you're done with the project and then you went home or like it's a break or somebody else have to come in and change something. You, you were supposed to build this project for seven, 10 features and uh, once you built it, if somebody comes and change even one line of code, how do I know whether I'm not breaking your 10 features? Like unless there is test, there is no way of doing it and if there is 100 percentage coverage, then I can just go and easily change refactor stuffs because Ideally when we start with the project we don't know much about the language like even I started writing go production code without knowing much then later we keep on changing it it evolves but if there is no test I'm surprised like or I don't know how you guys deal with it like you can tell <laughs> so that I'll also get to know anyone <laughs> yeah actually that happens like I, I know some friends like who do to that so, so so you guys are quiet so which means that there is no reason for you guys not to write test. So which I'm urging you guys to <laughs> write test. That's one thing. But if you guys think of other way, well, we have to talk. So to start with, like maybe I'll show some code which like does the TDD sort of thing. Like it's not purely writing test, but rather TDD way. Um, and uh, I thought I'll introduce uh, a package uh, testify, uh, which is very nice for uh, like asserting, asserting like expectations and also mocking. Uh, those are the two main things like which we do, and uh, also few other minor uh, things in the test package. Example, race condition it can be like race, and some feature. I'll I'll talk about that. Uh, so so I'll, I'll start with the TDD code. Um, so this is very contrived like the code the, the, the written code is not perfect like I didn't write the code for like the go automatic way but rather to convey the testing way so I have uh, this package uh, can, can I just So I have a package called uh, gopher world and what I have is uh, a gopher which has a name, weight and height, simple stuff, just a, a struct and I have some service. So what does, what this service does is uh, it returns a talus gopher, that's all, fine. Uh, don't look at the code, uh, I'm going to change it. Uh, Okay. 
Okay. So, given this is the feature, right? I have list of gophers. Um, I want a feature which is like returning a tallest gopher of all the list of gophers. So, what will be the code with which you will be writing? Like first shot. Like or anybody who written TDD or like anything, any any anything. Yeah, like if you do TDD, yes. But ideally, we jump into the whole uh, code, right? Like sorting is a simple thing. Like you sort and then return the first one. You have to sort it by descending and you return. Ideally, we jump into the whole uh, program, which is the uh, which is actually doing everything. But rather, what TDD tells us. Uh, Maybe three, four things. Uh, I'm not like precise things. Like it's it's my opinions. I might be wrong in some sense. That is a disclaimer. TDD is first you need to write tests. That is a thing. Uh, it's test driven development, right? And second thing is you should not write tests for uh, all the cases. Example here you can start with if I return a if I send a nil to it, it should basically return an error. Not like send five gophers and return the tallest. That is not the test. You should start very minimal. That is the purpose. And also, uh, in order to, like, you have a failing test now. S since you don't have any code, you have a test which actually fails. Now you will start writing some code, but you should not complete everything, but rather you should only write very minimal code to pass the test. Any questions, like, stop me and ask. Like, I want this to be clarified. Like, since this is basic terminologies or concept, you guys can ask questions. True, uh, sort of, but I'm saying do it in a minimal way. Like we're not going to write test for everything, but rather first step is no input. Second step, step is one go for something like that. Not the entire thing. Then go one by one, change minimal stuff. So if I have to show you the code, uh, this is what I have written. So test find tallest, like the names leave it, like it might not be idiomatic. Like this is just to convey it. Test find tallest gopher when there is no input. So then I'm expecting uh, an error, no gophers, fine. So now if I want to implement this, I don't even need to do anything. Like you don't, don't even check for the condition whether the gopher is null because just return an error and then which it passes, right? So that now you had a, a breaking test and then it passes. So let's just go to, uh, Desktop. and it passes then next step what will okay then what will be the next test ha huh, but still you're saying pass some gophers what i can think of is pass only one gopher and it should return the first gopher you don't even need to do any logics so uh, Uh, this is the git log. Um, sorry, I can't see. Uh, I should probably. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank. Um. So now this is the next test, like. When there is empty, like this is nil, which is a failure, like, and this is a, a code which expects empty list, and then you still expect a no for gophers. So here I have added the logic, but uh, let me show the next test. So this is visible, right? Yeah. So next test is uh, when there is only one gopher, uh, you should return the first gopher because that is the tallest. Um, 
you still don't need to implement anything because uh, all you need to do is handle the error case now then by default you can return the first gopher make sense so i hope you got a gist of it like this is what i am saying go step by step not uh, all shots uh, because the the reason is a uh, lot of times we don't think about those scenarios and because you write in smaller step and then you are di driven by the test the code itself looks different because the moment you write uh, tests it's very hard to test a improper code it is really complicated you need to uh, perfectly put the code in proper design different without dependencies so that you can easily test it that's one thing uh, yes Okay. Yes. So it goes to the basic thing. Unit test is something like any file which you write, any code, any single line of code, you will have a test for that same file. So you are basically telling about repository uh, services and handlers. Everything will have tests, but what tests will differ? That we can talk about it. Example. Uh, here, right, finding a Talos gopher, it is only the actual code. You can have another service, HTTP service, which gets a request and then hits this and still return the response. But there, you don't need to include this service into this package. What you need to do is mock this, like I'll talk about it. Unit test is something like if you have one function in the file which you are writing, you need to write test for that. You should not test the uh, other dependencies you are dependent on. You should assume that. Those things are tested. So when you start, you start with controller level and as you keep writing your... Like it depends. So you can do both ways. What you are telling is if you start with controller, you won't have the services. Then if you want to test, you should stub it or mock it. Stub or mocks. Or if you start with the basic repository level, then it's easy for you because you are building repository level first. Then you know what is the exact thing. Then you can come to the service layer. Then you know you can mock the repo layer have the test for uh, services, then services is consumed by handlers and handler you can mock the services and just test the handler separately and service separately, repo separately. And you also write, only write for like, public functions which are accessible by a True, test. true. Like, not for private. True. So when you write test, you are basically testing the behavior. I don't care whether it calls the a sort library or I don't care whether it uh, goes through and finds it and then caches it like it doesn't matter what implementation I use but rather all I want is given a gopher I should give get the first gopher which have the top, tallest height that's all so you should not test the private functions in go you still you can but in Java or in other world you can't uh, easily test the private functions it's complicated yeah okay cool uh, I'll move ahead uh, So that is the way we write uh, tests, like that is the approach we uh, talk about TDD. There are a lot of plenty of reasons to uh, write TDD or I don't see a reason why we should not write TDD. We can even talk later, like have a discussion if you want. So now probably we can look, look into a Go library, how are we going to test it? Uh, I'll give context on that. So if you noticed, all we have is a function tallest. And then we have a, a slice of gopher and it returns a gopher or error. So, sorry, it returns a gopher and error. And my test, right, like I'm using this library called uh, uh, testify assert for assertion perspective. But by default, Golang itself inbuilt has a testing library, testing package. And uh, anything, any function, if you start with test, and then underscore or anything, test something, it runs its spec. And the convention is uh, we keep the file name with underscore test as the appended and it is not included in the uh, final uh, production uh, uh, artifact. So it excludes that, the build tool. And uh, it accepts a parameter called a pointer testing t. Uh, this is the one which is, which you can have uh, 
control over the testing example skip the test or uh, fail the test or uh, uh, like parameters run it parallelly those are the things which is provided by this testing we can go into this later but the definition is uh, func test something and then something which takes uh, it takes a parameter testing dot t and then uh, your test code that's it sorry this is it this is the test and uh, any test right which we write uh, it will have a setup like at least that's what i we follow like setups before and then this is the actual side effect and this is the ass ass assertions okay so these two tests are simple let's look at uh, this test right uh, when only one gopher is given it should return me the uh, that gopher so i have a uh, only one gopher and i'm passing it uh, a slice with only one gopher what i'm expecting is i don't ex i should not expect any error out of this program that is the first thing and second thing is i'm expecting uh, this gopher is same as the one which is which it returned so here i'm using this assert package uh, this is pretty cool uh, because i also have a code uh, which doesn't use the assert but rather we have to do it manually uh, so everyone with me on same page in the assert okay probably i can break a thing and then uh, you guys can see it how this helps uh, expect let's say expected gopher and then this is the expected gopher and then i'm saying uh, not tallest let's say and then let's run this okay so if you notice uh, i hope you can see it so this line uh, it tells expected is not tallest but it actually received the tallest so it gives you a very nice uh, uh, way of representing your error it tells like where exactly it failed expected and received and it, it even tells the diffs i mean it helps in some of the cases where string uh, so yeah but let's go to the uh, function without the uh, assert package okay so this is a test which takes multiple gophers in this case i have only two gophers and then uh, this is the this is with 1.0 and this is with high 2.0 so this is the tallest so what we want is like uh, we call the function tallest with two gophers and now same thing what i am doing here right like i should assert there is no error but rather here we need to explicitly do that which is like if there is an error uh it should not throw an error but it got some error and then uh, fail this this is what i was saying even if you look at assert no error right it would have used something similar so if error nautical nil uh, it do it does a fail and then uh, that's it but rather here we might have to uh, we have to do that so uh let's just say uh return errors dot new sum error okay so if you notice this is we are doing it explicitly like we uh, run it and then uh, there is a stack trace and then we tell that the, it should not throw any error but it got some like some error and yeah so this is the way we uh will end up writing this if we don't use the asset package and uh, it doesn't stop there because now if you want to expect a group go for right i just wanted to imitate the same asset uh behavior of output so it says not equal and then expected and the actual and then fail it so we are doing these steps manually imagine uh you have a very large code base and this is the even simplest test which is like find the tallest but our code gets complicated and then this looks messy but rather what we want is uh, something simpler right uh, like we are actually writing a logic for test itself ha yes like assert package testify package gives us syntactic sugar that's all uh, okay i can i had some code there ha uh, huh. yeah i can go 
we'll put this stuff in. Hmm. Yeah, so I'll go to this. So this is the one, like it's like uh, 17 lines and let's, oh sorry. So this is the actual one with assert package. So it is pretty clear you have two gophers and you are calling something and then assert that there is no error and then assert that the tallest gopher is equal to the uh, final uh, tallest gopher which is written by the code. So this is which is like uh, eight lines. So this is a very nice feature. Uh, try to use it. Uh, this is one part of the testing package which is assert. Uh, and uh, if there's no questions, I can move to the next thing, which is mocks. Any questions? Yeah. Sorry. Huh. You're talking multiple test cases. But if you think of test, right, uh, I will keep the test separately for each cases. You're saying multiple test cases, but you won't have a single test which tests everything. Let's say what I can do is, I can test whether the, uh, uh, I can pass in three things or let's say there is a, another logic, another function uh, which gives tallest comma uh, shortest. So then you won't write a test which has, which tests both tallest and shortest in the same thing, but rather you will have one test with the same input, verifies the tallest first, then another one which verifies the shortest. So the code will be small. Your test case, it should not be blotted. It should be precisely testing one thing. That is what it's called unit test, right? So if we test both the shortest and longest, then it's not a one unit. Your test should only test shortest and then another test which should uh, test for the uh, tallest. That's it. Each function is a test case. Yes, yes. So uh, here I have like four functions. Like all, my, all of the code is uh, just, okay. Uh, let's just do a go test here. Okay, go test I think. Huh. So each of them is a test case and the test itself uh, is telling what it does. Like each of them is a test case. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. Like for a simple sort, now we have like five things and uh, now you can actually do go test cover and it does a cover, there is a coverage of 85%. Like I have a string method, stringer method in the gopher which I didn't test. Uh, Okay, uh, I think I can show that. In, uh, okay, uh, yeah. So if you notice, uh, uh, this is the one thing which is not tested. Go for a zero percent. There's no test. But for the service we have written, right? Uh, this is the coverage tool by default. Go provides us. The you guys can look it up. Uh, if you see, this is a low coverage which is grey and high coverage is green. We actually have more tests for this and of course we are not testing this. So now the moment you write all unit tests and now you run coverage, you should at least have like, it depends like we cannot achieve 100 percentage that's for sure. Uh, people have 90 percentage or more than 95 percentage. Then basically go and go through the code and whichever has the higher prone error or higher uh, business value code you tested more. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's it for the assertion, testify asset package. So now I can move to the next step. Um, the same statement we talked about, right? Uh, now there is a package which depends on this package, similar to a service depending on the repository, but how will I test that? Like, Everyone aware of mocks or stubs, like, or can anyone tell mocks, like, what is mocks just? Mocks, mocks. Yes. So, uh, let's say we are using a library, a CLI external package or uh, um, what, what is that, mux router or something. You will be using that in your code, but rather, let, let's say that is doing some complicated things but you will be sure that 
it always works and then you have to trust that because libraries will should be tested and what is the value you're giving here is a mock like a mock is something uh, which is a not a real object but rather a, your custom written one and you can uh, stub the values or mock the values like stub and mock still have a different conventions but let's stick with mocks I'll, i'm going to say mocks for from now for any function call on this particular external services you can mock the return values so because of which your two packages does not depend for this it is sufficient uh, you are actually testing that particular piece of code example services so uh, this is where like go is uh, pretty good where if it is java or something you will have to use external libraries um, junit or something which does mocking for you and there are a lot of magics happening inside but rather here since we have interfaces what we need to do is we will end up writing our own custom interface uh, or custom struct which others to the service interface and then you can write your own stub value so uh, let's go to uh, earth um okay so the naming are screwed like i didn't know what name to come up with and what classes to come up with so so i have a uh, earth package now the earth package depends uses the gopher world so what i have in earth package is uh, uh, <coughs> a human and uh, his name and he have some pets and uh, for a human i need to get the tallest pet right so this actually depends on uh, the pets world dependency uh, so this is actually like probably i'll go through this later uh, let's say pet world so this is basically uh, something like this so yeah so this guy now depends on a, a external package like i hope you all can uh, understand what this is i have a tallest package tallest pet on uh, human uh, struct which i'm expecting it to return a uh, tallest of list of gophers which is my pets so there i'm using a pet world which is the external service which we were testing earlier and uh, i'm just calling with calling that service with my pets that's all okay so now uh, i'll just like leave this syntax like we'll come to that later so there is a dependency now uh but if you notice i don't have a external dependency here like i don't have a, a import for that particular uh, uh pet world but rather what i have is uh i have a interface and that interface has a method called tallest and uh, it are basically others to the same thing so here what i'm saying is uh, i i have earth but i am not depending on the pet world but rather i have my own interface and somebody should satisfy that uh, interface that's all so uh, any questions on that if if you if there is no questions i'll assume that it's all understood and then you guys are all rock so please do ask question so now uh, this is the service we had right this is the service we had like uh, if you notice just one function but now what we need need us uh imagine there is a main in in case of services and repository somebody will be building the service object for you with repository dependency inside the same way now somebody have to build the earth with pet world as a dependency inside and in order to create a, a instance of the package or use that package as a dependency i have a method uh, function with create which just returns a world and here i have a implementation which has the tallest so now if you notice um this and this it's basically same this piece of code with this piece of code it matches that's all you need so given that there is a another interface and then somebody will be injecting that for you now we can go to the tests uh so human test <coughs> so here i am using uh, a pet world mock like this is where we come in uh, so here i am using a package uh, a mock testify mock but even without that we can write 
your own custom mock return values but it will be much harder because for every test cases you will have to write your own custom implementation and here uh, you can you are actually defining this under this mock I have another uh, function which is actually othering to that interface so like before going through this let's just do this uh, so what I'm expecting is uh, So, so I got rid of the uh, like equals, I, I'm not testing that, but probably I can go through that later. So what I was trying to say is, uh, mock, yeah. So here what I'm saying is, instead of using the external package, still you can use a struct which returns a, a first value, let's say, let's say. You, you can have another function like, uh, imagine this is not available. Uh, return uh, mock the gopher and then you can even have something like uh, set uh, return and uh, you will accept a single gopher so let's say uh, we have something like uh, pet world mock dot uh, return is equal to gs yeah, sir. No, no, I'm just setting it, and here I'm returning the mock gopher, like uh, mock gopher. Mock gopher, which is basically a gopher. So, yeah. So, it's something like now if you want to use this uh, interface or your implementation as a uh, stub right we will end up writing something like uh, my pet world pet world mock dot uh, set return some gopher like some expected gopher and then you will call the actual fun actual human but in human you will be passing this pet world pet world mock so understood right like we can write our own implementation which others to interface so that you can use it in your code but instead of that this library gives us a syntactic sugar very similar to assertion so now let's go look how that looks uh, and then we'll come to this later so now right uh, here I'm creating a human world but if you notice this pet world is uh, defined here this is basically a, uh, the mock which we defined here okay and uh, we can have something like this so on a mock when there is a tallest method called with this expected parameter then I can return some value like instead of doing our own implementation this library lets us do this so let's try to run the test and then I uh, hope we can appreciate that Uh, okay, so uh, leave this, sorry. Mm. Yeah. So here our expectation is this should call the dependency, but rather I'm not calling it. And uh, our test, what it does is, uh, it expects there is a call with this tallest with the pets as a parameter. So now if I run go test, so actually it's telling uh, the code your, uh, uh, give me a sec, leave this thing. Huh. So there, there is no call actually happened. So that's why it's failing. And it tells us nicely. So here actually you're testing whether you're using that proper service properly and then you're passing the parameter. So you're passing a parameter list of uh, like pets to the uh, pet world. So that's what we are testing. So now let's just add that uh, implementation here. 
and it passes. Make sense? Like any questions? How does how does your test code know which mock to activate? Correct. If you have multiple mocks on different. Correct. Let's go to this code. Uh, so what this guys do is uh, obviously instead of having the direct return value, be setting the expectation and setting the return value and returning it. These guys use uh, something like here. If you notice, there is some mock inside our interface. Now we actually called on something on this like yeah. on some particular method and return some value. So here, let's go to this uh, human test. Huh. So here, what they do is imagine on is a method name and its parameters, you are basically, let's just put it this way, right? Uh, concat or concatenating all the method names and the parameters as strings, and then you are saying that is the key. Let's just have it that way. And then the return value is another call, and then you return the value. Like basically, you are mapping this key value to this. So let's say calculator, right? Uh, on, let's say there is an external calculator dependency. On a call of one plus one, you will return two. So one underscore one is a key and two is a return value. If you say one comma three is four, it will return one three is four. So that is a like naive implementation, like just a just to explain. But rather, just this goes to extend like types, uh, verifying uh, the method name, number of calls, all those things which which it does. So um, so here, if you notice, right, we actually say uh, on this mock when the method is called with this parameter, like leave the return part. So it, what it does is it itself have a state where it says it is an expected call. So when you add that line, basically you are expert expecting that to happen. Yeah. So this guy uh, adds a list of expected calls. And now here, right, let's go here. This is where we uh, assert the expectations happen. So here it will test whether uh, the expectation is uh, there or not. See. In all expected calls, whether it is there or not. So there are 10 function calls and 10, 10 times it has to happen. Correct. I mean, this is a very simple implementation, but rather imagine you are depending on the service, you have to make three calls. Let's say you are adding and then you are summing, uh, your addition, subtraction, and then you are doing a multiplication on top, on top of that. So basically you are doing three functions on the external service. You will end up mocking those three things. Correct. So finally, when you assert expectation, it should expect all the three method calls. Or let's say, instead of this tallest, right, uh, I can even say uh, dot once. Like I should call only once. Uh, now let's go to human. And then, uh, uh, okay. So we call twice. So let's see what this tells. Uh, so imagine there is no mocking happened, right? For the next time, it doesn't know what to return. So what it tells is, or there is a parameter mismatch. This library tells us very nicely, hey, actually you made a call something like this, some go for something, something, but rather I have one mapping inside me. Like imagine that key mapping we've done, right? If you call with a different thing, it doesn't know what to return. So then it fails. I mean, ideally I was expecting it to fail like you call twice, but this is a different thing. Um, but still we can get to know that that many calls have not happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many calls are excess. Yes. So when I didn't do the once, right, uh, let's just get rid of the once. Okay, I think it will pass. So now I remove the once. Uh, I think I missed something else. Let me just quickly check. Um, let's go to mock. Hmm. Uh, let me check. If not, we can. I can show you later. So I here, Thomas. Sorry. Shayad save me. He was asking the red leg. Didn't get you. Sorry. File was not saved. Oh no! I save it. Always. So our implementation has ones that saved. Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah. So, 
yeah so it doesn't it mocks it for any number of calls it returns the same value that's it so this is basically a generic implementation you can have uh, let's say when there is a call to shortest on this pets return the shortest gopher like this is a i don't have the actual return values but rather to explain you can have another method like you will you you can you will be writing something if there is a service then you can return this and then you will be when you assert expectations it will fail so let's say let's just run this right so you are expecting shortest to call but it doesn't happen that's it so now like on the same page let's go inspect the mocks right now how does it know uh, on these parameters return this value so imagine it has a like as we said like key is stored and return value is stored it actually t tells hey on this mock i got a parameter and then basically i'm telling like i got a call with this parameter so now it got the return value so it's imagine this is a registry right uh we say 1 underscore 2 and in redis let's say in redis we get the redis 1 underscore 2 value and then here i return the value so extra information what you are seeing here is uh, there is two return values but rather i'm also asserting its type the first one should be gopher and the second one should be a, uh, error so here if i let's say change this to this right uh, it will fail saying uh, this is a null um ha yeah okay let's say we are calling shortest it actually didn't happen because of which we didn't uh, receive anything uh, shortest is undefined with pets Ah uh, no, it's really not. Ha, huh, true. Sorry. Yes, yes. Wait, give me a sec. Uh, yeah, it's failing in that code, I think. But I hope you got the thing. Yeah. Uh, so let's revert this. Okay. So that is one thing. Like so, now for any external services, imagine this is the repository, right? Or can anyone tell the reasoning behind why we need to mock it? Why can't I just use a real implementation? DB, DB service usually, like if you're a repository, it checks as DB, and you don't want to actually test on your database. So you why, why not? Why, do, why not use that? Correct. But yes, the final result is we want the feedback cycle to be fast. Like let's say there is five developers, one somebody breaks it. If the build takes one hour, seriously, we'll be pissed off. So the unit test is supposed to run faster. And as you said, when there is an external DB, DB dependencies or if you use the real implementation and test everything end to end, it takes more time. That's the point. So I remember like you guys must have seen the test permit, like unit test at the uh, bottom level or like unit tests are more integration tests. I mean, integration tests people tell differently. Uh, let's say there is service and DB uh, test integration, that lesser. But finally, UA test should be very minimal because those takes a lot, lot of time. So our objective should be high coverage, but also the test package should be very taking very, very less time. The feedback should be immediate. I should not wait for a very long time to receive, like when I run this test, I mean, I have another test. It, if it takes long time, what we'll do, we'll take a break or like, yeah. So, sorry, come again? You are validating your contract to your external Not really. Uh, let's say the return value is right. Instead of the tallest, I can return the shortest value. Yeah, but you are still validating the contract, right? That is, if I make a method, what is it that I am saying? Correct. So, that validation is actually done by a method, right? Uh, I would rather put it the other way. I mean, you are basically substituting something for the service. Definitely, you need to other to the interface. There is no other way. Uh, but there are different perspectives on mocking. Let's say there is an external service call repository happening, right? Uh, sorry, external service call to uh, another thing. When I say service call, it's a HTTP request. There, ideally, we stub the JSON. Like, we don't uh, tell on this call, like, do something, but rather we stub the value. But there, instead of the uh, actual contract, your contract can be breaking. 
Let's say you're returning a tallest gopher is this, and then his name is something in the response. This, assume this is service. Tomorrow I remove the name, but still, still your mock and the, the service will pass. But your original service removed the name from the actual contract. You get what I'm saying? So the mocks can go skewed in some cases where mocks can be uh, obsolete, but it still sticks with the types. We cannot uh, get away with the interface types, but rather the uh, behavior or the data inside can be changed. Like it depends on how we mock it. So that is one thing. Uh, yeah, so on the same line, right, we were talking, uh, test should be uh, taking <coughs> shorter time, but I cannot get away without writing any integration tests also. Like, let's say you have uh, 20 APIs, all the 20 APIs making a service or calls to DB. You, you will ideally mock the DB, but rather, at least there should be some test which tests your integration with DB is fine. Imagine you are constructing a DB URL for connection, and if it fails, you, all you have is unit test, everything is good. But when you deploy, it will fail because you didn't test end to end, right? So we cannot get away without writing integration tests also. But there is one thing in uh, uh, Go which helps us separate the long test and short test. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that. Like, I hope you guys got the point right. Like, we have to write integration tests, but it should be minimal. Uh, rather than testing all the uh, connections, you can write at least one query, right? Like, in Redis, all you need to do is get some random key or get some random value. So, which means it gives you a confidence the Redis end-to-end -end integration is fine. That's all you need to do. You don't need to test for all the cases scenarios. So, that is the point I was saying. So, here I have, uh, let's say some test, right? Like, here I'm doing a behavior of sleeping in this, but rather imagine your code takes a long time, right? What do you want to do is you want to skip it or you want to see unit test results immediately, but rather integration test rather mail to you, let's say. So this test wait for three seconds. Now if I run go test, right? It waits for three seconds and fails. But instead, what Go gives us is uh, there is an option called uh, you can pass parameters or flags to it. And uh, basically, I'm skipping the test because here I want to see only the tests which run faster. So which means like here I am doing, if you say run only short tests and I know that this code is going to take long time, like assume this is a call, then I'm going to skip it. So here I broke the test just to show you guys. So which means here we are not running the long test. So with this, actually you can uh, have integration test, but use it in a separate pipeline which is running parallelly, like in a different way. Okay. So in this case, like uh, it should not run after the like, what is it after the if loop? No, it it is basically skipping the test. So it only do whatever inside like not, not short function. No, 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 no. Here, if it is short, I'm basically skipping the test at all. I'm not even doing it. But rather we will have another somewhere like uh, pipeline which runs all the tests without the uh, but short format. Like right? huh. Yes. So this is just to imitate, but rather your code will do that. But I, I, I think I keep saying CI, but I hope you guys like you guys have CI and continuous like or CI C D, you guys have heard. Okay, yeah. So then then I will drop that. <laughs> because every commit Ideally, it have all the coverage and all the tests. Every commit you make should run all the tests. And only if everything passes, you guys have to deploy. If not, we shouldn't. So that's the point of having all these things. Uh, so that is one, which I want to tell. And second thing is, uh, um, ha, yeah, this one. So, let, let, let's say uh, there is a code which <coughs> causes race condition right in our test and uh, it is very hard to test for a race condition because our real real time systems will receive multiple messages at the same time and the load will be like hundreds or thousands million depending on the system but in test it's very hard to imitate that and in production you might hit a scenario where it's breaking but how will we test that it's hard like Let's say we are writing test by ourselves, right? We will be uh, calling the same function thousand times in all different threads, like hundred threads. Let's say that is a way to test it, but still that doesn't assure you will catch that exceptions. But rather, what Go has is uh, uh, 
दो टेस्ट ओके गो देर इज अ फ्लैग कॉल्ड रेस वॉट इट डज इज इट रंस योर कोड विथ स्पेशलाइज अलगोरम्स दे हैव ओके या सो इट यूजेज अ एक्सटर्नल लाइब्रेरी and then their algorithm is uh, very good i think like i haven't got time to go through it and based on that it tests test your uh, application so go test like i'm just run, okay i'll just get rid of uh, long test and then i'm running a uh, race condition so now if you see though the short test takes time it i think it tries to run it plenty of times so let's go to the code and see what's happening like how i uh cause the issue uh yeah let's let's say there is a <coughs> uh variable right like it's very contact example kaviraj was suggesting and we have a global variable uh, total pets and there is a function which adds to it and there is another function which uh, also changes states now imagine there is a scenario uh imagine there is a scenario where you are doing both of that so now you won't know which is the result because it depends on which takes first and then the second one and the result of the second one will be your final result so and this is a suspicious code but in actual test you cannot capture it and here it is pretty obvious but in our gola in our production code or even the external libraries we will be using uh there is plenty of code and there is plenty of go routines used and it's hard to capture the error by ourselves so because of which this flags helps us very very much so now it actually tells uh, um there is a race condition failure uh, data race created at human race yeah it spits out lot of information but i think we we finally that's what we want right then later we can inspect what's happening uh there and then we can uh fix the issue so like using locks ideally like our production issue so that flag is helps and in prod uh we should always have another pipeline like with which tests the race conditions also so that also helps so mm, i think uh, that's all i had like uh, just to give a just so finally to summarize you can use uh, uh, uh we can we have to write tests uh tdd drive with tests write tests first and then uh, write your code start minimally don't write everything uh go step by steps which actually helps you uh, keep your design of the actual code better because now we are mocking right in java world it's hard to mock it's very hard uh, that time we will have different uh classes injected rather than using inheritance all the stuff and that's on the tdd and second thing is uh, we mock the external dependencies so that we don't take full time and we assume the external libraries uh, tested and uh, we can use the asset expectation so that to reduce the boiler plate code and uh, what else use the race condition and yeah try to have higher coverage that's it and any questions we can take it and anybody can discuss um, Uh, actually i didn't use it but yeah other projects use it so when he asked suits right um, here it is pretty simple scenario but imagine db uh, db there is a test for db you have to do a setup which is like taking all the configuration for a uh, database and then making a connection and then for all the tests you need to use a database connection so for that you will do a setup for all the tests and then finally clearing out everything so integration test ideally will mutate the tables right so finally you will have to clear the tables so in that case what he said was test suit there is something called test suit and also test mine in go where we can do that stuff where uh, you can have a logic setup and then before each test runs this setup runs and finally you can clear out everything it's very uh, uh, similar to java's setup and tear down with given by jnode something like that if you guys used it so yeah i haven't used it but there are some other projects which uses it and it is based on the cases if it we needed we have to use it yes also like pellet running the test in that 
सॉरी हाँ करेक्ट इट्स अ वेरी गुड पॉइंट लाइक इमेजिन लाइक द मोमेंट योर कोर्ट बेसिस ग्रो राइट यू हैव इसीली थ्री थाउजेंड टेस्ट लाइक इफ यू हैव अ गुड कवरेज राइट देर विल बी लॉट ऑफ टेस्ट एंड वॉट गो ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड्स इज गो टेस्ट आई थिंक पैरल सम थ्री आई जस्ट टू अ शॉर्ट yeah so here it will not be uh, visible quickly but rather when your test takes uh, 10 seconds because it runs everything sequentially uh, if you run parallelly basically you are running all the tests parallelly so this flag is pretty helpful in that case uh, but also there is a catch uh, let's say you are using db connections right one is trying to insert another is trying to delete uh, i'm not sure whether we might end up in race condition there so i think there we have to explicitly use parallel one like i haven't used it myself like if others have done it sure like so parallel run it for unit test for integration test just think about it and then like do it properly that's it uh yeah that's the parallel thing um yeah so yeah thank you for the point so in cycles race race flag right that's address the data race not the race and race condition yeah you can talk yeah. so you can give context to everyone So basically, the the race flag is is not distributed. I mean, it's very very impossible to detect data race condition by the way. So they the flag which are providing for the race they just only the data race. Both are different. So data race is something like a, there is a part of memory where more threads are accessing at the same time. So that is the only thing you can find. So huh. Race, race condition race eventually leads to a data race. I think yeah. it's not so difficult. So race condition is totally different. This is something that's almost impossible to find. Huh. By, uh, by static analysis, like they are doing. Right? Huh. Sorry. Yes. <coughs> it is not figuring out the uh, result by uh, the code analysis as you said but rather checking the memory directly so yeah data is yes. yeah sorry you were saying something uh yes i already have a github like i'll commit this uh, first time i try to actually record it let's see if it works like i have the screen recording and audio recording i'll also post it hope it helps and yeah thank you if you have any questions or discussions like Even basic things, we can take it offline, and then we get we can discuss it.